like this type of development for a research park? Not that, that I'm aware of. of. If somebody I'm has aware. one, speak I didn't now. know if one of the <laughs> universities or Delta community or anybody yeah. has done anything like that. Uh, yeah. No, there's nothing like that. Okay. Well, I think it's very important. I do a lot of work with tech, teaching the kids how to sell, basically, and market their deal. And unfortunately, most of them are foreign that really have the innovative ideas. And once they get through the language barrier, they're pretty good. I think my first step, if I had to pick a reason, would be to get the three universities, or four, to get together and come together with what they want to do. Tech has a great program. ULM is developing a program. You know, it's different sets, mindset. One's engineering, one's medicine, let's say, or nursing, or whatever it is. But I think you've got to get, number one, I'd pick techs, and I'm a probably biased, although I'm an Auburn graduate, so I'm not, not worried about that. But it's, it's important to see what these kids can do. When I first saw a 3D printer, printer I didn't have a clue as to what it was. And I've been an engineer for 53 years. So, you know, these kids knew what they knew. It. They, they, they smoked me oh, for it's, sure. It's, it's amazing what they're doing. But yeah. then I had a kid who <clears throat> bought old books. He went and bought them. He paid less than $5 for them. He started selling them on the internet for $10 a piece, and he made so much money, I couldn't stand him. It was <laughs> unbelievable. So there's opportunity oh, out there. Well, you know, that, that's that's one of the, these kids are so sharp and especially oh, uh, internet savvy. Um, one of the one we have two companies that in our student incubator, uh, and and I'm gonna say this, and you're gonna call me a liar, but they because I, I was telling some other people, and my student incubator manager was there, and I said this this company is doing a million dollars a year. And he said, no, their last month was a million dollars. This, this company, this is the craziest thing in the world. It's called Performance Mods. They sell, the guy's a, uh, he's a NASCAR, you know, uh, Formula One racing enthusiast. And, and he has, uh, there's a market for these, uh, these high performance auto parts. And he started putting them on his website. And, and selling them, and he knew how to get search, search optimization to where when you, when you Googled this particular part, his thing popped up early, you know, our first, and so people were buying from him. He never touched a thing. He was drop shipping it from these the different manufacturers. And now he's, he's actually this, uh, he's, he's dropped out of school this semester because he's been going to Thailand and China <coughs> to develop these distribution channels. And with these manufacturers, and he is absolutely killing it. He's got an office at the. He started in a student incubator. He's now rented a office that he's paying six hundred a month for. That's you know like twelve by twelve, and he has nothing in, no products in there. He's got five computers, and uh, and he's he's generating this. The uh, another guy was doing uh, with hunting equipment. He was uh, he was selling Swiss Army knives and all sorts of hunting accessories. Couldn't do guns. But any any type of things, uh, and and then he he's generating a, a living as well. Um, you know, and it's, he has no inventory. He has no overhead basically, other than the little rent he pays us. And uh, and then then we've got some uh, companies. We had uh, two band students uh, at, with the LSU Tiger Band that uh, they when they were practicing, they they give them this flip book with all their music, and it's heavy. And when it's windy or it gets wet, it's just nasty. And uh, and then the school, the van was printed, spending, I mean, like you know, fifty thousand dollars a year in copies of, of this this music. And so what they did, they said, well, you know, we all have our iPhones and our iPads. What if we had the music on there, and we just need to make an attachment to attach to the musical instrument? So they came to our three D printer, and we made that attachment, and it's called uh, E Flip. And now they're selling to 300 bands, high school and college bands, all over the United States. And it's a little piece of plastic they got a patent on. It clips your, your deal there, and you play your music. And, you know, it's like, damn, why not think of that? You know, but the, they, they had a problem, they solved it. You know, so these, these students are sharp. I really <coughs> think our first step should, should be to have a uh, funding group, a, a group of these people and whoever else needs to be involved to do the feasibility study. I think what you're suggesting would 
come, would be a part of the feasibility study, and um, I approached uh, Louisiana Tech at one point, and they said, "Why would you want to do that? We are, we're, we're, we're running on all cylinders doing what you want to do." Uh, but I do believe there's room for collaboration, and I, I don't think that was a final yeah, answer. No. But uh, I think getting the feasibility study, there's so much that we don't know that would be yielded by that feasibility study, and entities already started sweetening the pot, so I think we're on our way. Let me just say, you, you, you're talking about the, you know, the innovation portion of it, and um, the maker space, I heard you mention. Mm -hmm. and I had an opportunity to sit in I had someone came that came to our area a couple of weeks ago and presented about makerspace and they were talking about that someone had developed an idea and um, instead of selling that product it was just the file that he actually sold so it was for a fishing lure and it was you know they developed this fishing lure and he could send that file anywhere in the world and if they had a 3D printer, they could then print that, you know, fishing yeah, lure. Yeah. And I think it goes to show us where technology <coughs> is taking us. And our children that are in school now, that is what is going to keep them here. That's what, you know, is going to provide our community in the future. You know, are those kids and, and what, what we provide them to learn and to grow with. And um, I am one of those kids that as soon as I graduated high school, I left. And I had the opportunity to come back home in the position that I'm in now to help with industry in our community. And I'm very, very passionate about that. And I now have an 11 year old and want to see her stay here. You know, um, does she? I don't know. You know, but I do want to make sure that I've provided her every opportunity. And I think with a feasibility study, at least we get to see what potential we do have out there and how we can develop that. It may come back and show us something totally different than what we're talking about today. You know, but at least we will know that and we will have that information. So, I, yes. I completely I, agree with you yes. about we want to hang on to the kids here. Yes. But we, I don't think we want to lower ourselves. I think we sure. want to be attracted to people outside. Absolutely, <coughs> to bring them in. Here. Yes, you know, I would love to see us taking. Yes, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, very good point. But, uh, let me expand a little bit on that. In my vision, the role of economic development is in the private sector. That's who we have here, and more. This is where economic development should occur, and, and it, it needs to be done in a structured way. And that's what Charlie can, uh, can help put us together. As far as what we do, uh, we have incredible resources and the opportunities are limited by our imagination and, and what our resources are and what your goals and your goals and everyone else's goals are. And, and so we need to have uh, the open minds to do that. And so what, what, what I have suggested, and, and I want everybody to comment about this, what I've suggested is that as we get a feasibility study, we need to look at in a group of, of people, a, a board, if you will. Uh, and there, there are two kinds of boards in, in my estimation. One of them is an organizational board and the other is an operational board. We need an organizational board that, that helps us uh, take advantage of the things that Charlie has, uh, has pointed out there on the direction we need to go. And then the most important part of any board is to select a CEO because there is money out there. And we can find the money, but we need a, a, a qualified and experienced CEO to help us find the money to, uh, to find the, the plans and the goals to put this all together. And, and, and that will change and that will be modified, but that, that's, that's the way that I see it. So, so first, though, we need $25,000 to do a feasibility study, right? Yes. We do. Well, I'll commit two grand to it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, energy is going to give us... Uh, some money uh, to do this and so that, that helps us uh, get there and we've had uh, a couple of other people that said that they would give a thousand dollars. I have no doubt that we, we can raise the money uh, to, uh, to do this uh, and, and that's 
a key and important. Charlie's going to retire pretty soon, I understand, and I'm going to engage him uh, as, as quickly as possible. As, as quickly as possible to get this done. So, uh, so what's the amount needed left if you're committing? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm all. I, I want to know the amount that we got to get to. Yes. So we have to get to twenty five. We have we have to get to twenty five thousand. Okay. So Entergy is willing to put up seventy five hundred at this time. I, I think for other people that I've talked to, we we can raise. With the energy money, we can raise up to ten thousand. You got another fifteen thousand to go. Okay. Can I ask well, a question, David, Joe? What do you, Joe, Holyfield? What do you think? We'll look at that. Bill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Anybody have any other questions that we can help solve? I think we all today? need to realize the educational level of our work of these. Now, these kids are wonderful. What about the 60-year-old <coughs> that's a welder that his hand shakes, you, and he still wants to work? I'm an 83-year-old, and my hand, I can weld, and my hand shakes, okay? There's got to be a, I, I did talk to one of the engineers at Tech, and he's got some ideas, okay? So an 83-year-old man can weld. What do you, you might as well be useful. Why well, sit on your home and die? I mean, that's, that's just the way I look at it. I agree. I'm sorry. There's a lot of amens on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we will be in touch with all of you very soon. We will reach out to you individually. We will um, uh, be talking to you soon to see uh, where we are and to be able to get... Um, Hopefully, get Dr. Dag on his way with our feasibility study. And if you left your contact information, I will make sure that you get follow ups on what we're doing. Yes. That's great. Right. We appreciate we all of your time today. Can we get a copy of the, of the presentation? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's on that computer. I don't know whose computer it is, but I can email it to you. Yeah. And I have a copy of it if you you're okay. Okay, with she, yeah, she email can email it. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, I'll send it out. Great job, bro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.